All right, it is February 9th, uh, 21, and we're looking at Luke chapter 12, 35 to 48. 35 to 48. Um, sorry, I'm just adjusting this. Oh, my stand is semi-broken, but it is still working. So, yeah, let me pray for us, and then we'll get started. Lord, we just thank you for this time, and as always, we pray, Father, for your grace. We pray for your spirit to strengthen our spirits from the inside out. Uh, strengthen our hearts to continue to search you uh, through thick and thin. And that as we are going through uh, another month in 2021, may we stay hopeful, may we stay joyful, and may we have our faith be resting upon you and you alone. We thank you, Lord. Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right. Looking at verse 35, and it says this. So this is Jesus talking. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Peter said, Lord, are you telling this parable for us or for all? And the Lord said, Who then is the faithful and wise manager? Whom is this his master will set over his household to give them their portion of food at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all his possessions. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and get drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and put at an hour he does not know and will cut him in pieces and put him with the unfaithful. And that servant who knew his master's will but did not get ready or act according to his will will receive a severe beating. But the one who did not know and did what was deserved a beating will receive a light beating. Everyone to whom much was given, of him much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. All right, today's message is very, very simple. Is this. Wake up. Jesus is coming. And we're all going to have to give an account one day to the Lord. Now, if you look at the passage, you see like, at, especially at the end, there's various degrees of knowledge. So let's just go over real quick. And so it says, um, there's the one that pretty much knew the master, meaning they knew God, but did the complete opposite lifestyle. They were sinful and they just completely was abusing their life and abusing others. And they will pretty much get the judgment that they deserve. Now you'll see that there's a servant who knew the master's will. Like they knew what God's will was to live for him in his kingdom, but they didn't act. They didn't do anything with their faith. So it's kind of like those who just simply give God lip service they're going to be judged as well. Now, the next degree is for those who did not know anything about God, but still sin. They're still going to get the punishment of their sin, but it's not going to be as severe for those who did know, but did nothing or did know and did the complete opposite. So you see three layers of responsibility. But the very end is that the statement is, everyone to whom much was given of him, much will be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. See, everyone, whether you knew God, knew somewhat of God, or known Him, we're all going to have to give an account one day to the Lord. And so that's why for us, regardless if you know much, know little, or know much, or know like in between, everyone is going to have to give an account. And so you might think that, oh, maybe if I just, you know, set myself up to know less, then I will get, I will get a lesser punishment. But let's be honest here that lifestyle will also rob you of the fullest joy that you can experience being in the God, in the will of God. And so for Christians, we have to ask ourselves, are we awake and understanding that Jesus can and will come at a time we're not going to be expecting? And if anyone tells you 
they know when Jesus is coming. They give you like a date. They say, I found the number. I, I, I did the numbers. I did like the crazy, you know, new knowledge, new, new uh, evidence. They're lying to you. They are lying to you. They're trying to probably most likely take your money and most likely they're, they're a cult. So don't believe anyone that shows tell you, hey, I know when Jesus is coming back. No one knows. Jesus even said he doesn't even know when he's coming back. But the reality is he is. He is coming back. And I pray that we as a church won't be caught lacking. That we won't be caught unaware, lazy, or so busy living our life that we tell ourselves, I'll come back to God or focus on God when I have a little bit more time. See, God doesn't just want 10 minutes your day. He wants priority and he deserves priority. And that's the thing, uh, to make Christianity more kind of appealing to people, we, we get to a place where be holy, but just a, not too much. Um, follow God and serve God, but just not too much. So they'll, we'll, we'll throw this term called balance around. So, you know, we got to balance our life. But this is the thing, the balance that God seeks for him and us is 100% for him. So in the eyes of the world, that's actually not balanced. So you can't go 100% one way and call that balance. That's very imbalanced, but that's how it works in the kingdom. God doesn't want balance. He wants all of it. But we as religious people or more people who want to be more about ourselves and our kingdoms and this world, what we try to do is use a wise term and say, we got, but we got to have balance. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't like... Um, be abusive in the sense that because a lot of people get burnt out because rather than serving God, they're serving a system. Rather than serving God, they're serving a person. And so therefore, there is an imbalance in that way. We're talking about when it comes to the commitment of God, there is no balance. There's all 100% or none. And for the church, we're going to come to realize the more we know about God, whether we obey or believe it, but we just hear it, the more we're going to be responsible for so that's why as leaders, if you ever aspire to be a leader, which we all should be aspiring to serve and being a servant leader, don't think that becoming a servant, uh, a leader means that people now serve you. But if anything, you're held at a higher level of standard and you're required to serve more. But then there's the beauty of serving more. There's beauty of living for God in a higher capacity in building his kingdom. And when we look at today's passage, it's the idea, we could sum this up with the word stewardship. And you know the thing is, it's easy to steward things when you realize they're not your things, but that they've been entrusted you into, unto you by someone that you love. And so when, it, when Jesus stewarded the will of God the Father, he was able to do it to the point of dying for the Father, not since dying for the Father's sins, but the Father's will to save the sins of the people. It's because he loved him. And so stewardship at its finest and most beautiful state is when it's fueled by love. And it's, if anything, in the kingdom, it can be only capable when you love God. And so Jesus displayed that for us. And so for us, when we think of today's uh, passage, one, we're all stewards, but two, are we, are, are we stewarding? And three, are we stewarding it because we love the one who is the true master and owner of all living things created, whether now, past, present, or future? And so the question again today is for you to think about, are you pretty much living your life for the Lord or not? Are you stewarding this life that God has given you? Are you stewarding the word that you have heard or have seen or have studied? Um, because there's going to come a day where we're all going to have to give an account. And I pray that we don't show up that day saying, God, I'm sorry. Um, I didn't know or I thought I had more time. Because it says in the scripture, you know, the good servant is one who just without even prompting or poking or nudging, just did what was called for them to do faithfully every day, regardless if there's any sign of the master coming back. Don't look for a sign to be faithful. Be faithful now. Because Jesus was and is the sign and the cause of our faithfulness. And so 
yeah, ask yourself today, am I living, stewarding this faith that God has given me, stewarding this life that the Lord has breathed into me? And if not, ask yourself, what can you do? Ask the Spirit. How can I adjust? How can I shift? How can I refocus so that I am a faithful steward and servant of the Lord that I profess to call Lord, all right? Very simple, but very actually sobering because you're going to have to come to a realization that your life is not your own. It's something that has been given to you as a gift that you must take care of. And the only way that that is truly taken care of is when He, God, is the Lord over your life. So very simple in its presentation. It's going to be hard in its application, but um, by God's grace, it is very much doable. All right? So may you reflect today and find yourself not lacking. Um, so be blessed as always, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.